All right, so we're going to call the Tuolumne County Transit Agency meeting to order. And this would be the opportunity for oral communication for the public to speak on any item not on the agenda. Not on our agenda. Well, I would just like to address the second fatality that we had on Stockton Road. And I was kind of expecting his friends and family to be here because they were a little concerned about that. And there was a memorial set up and someone came from Caltrans and wasn't very nice about it. So they had to relocate their memorial. But anyway, we've now had two fatalities on Stockton Road. So how many do we have to have down by the fairgrounds before we actually do something to make that area safer? Any other public comment? I thought I saw you getting ready. Just a quick, a quick idea I wanted to share that I've been thinking about is that what if they put some kind of wind collectors to augment energy along where cars and trucks go fast? I don't know if you've ever walked along a highway, but the wind could hold you up. I mean, we could be make, collecting all this energy when people drive through town. Thank you. I was thinking about I-5. Yeah, or 405. In the fog and nothing moves. <laughs> just the trucks. All right, consent calendar. Item 2, approval of the October 11, 2017 meeting minutes. Item 3, update on changeable message sign. And item 4, direct staff to collaborate with the Tuolumne County Visitors Bureau on proposal to provide free Saturday trolley service. Okay. Have you read Have you read them though? I have. Uh, we've been advised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been advised by council that if you have read the minutes, that you can vote on. Them. Vote on. Okay. Okay. Any public comment on any of those items? All right. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the council, transit agency. Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to pull item four. On the consent calendar. Okay. I'll move approval of item two and three. Yeah, Motion second. All in favor for consent calendar items two and three with item four pulled. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none. Motion carries. Item four. Maybe a little background might help direct staff to collaborate with the Visitors Bureau. Sure. That's, and that's Tyler's what I'm looking for. That is my main uh, face that we present to the Visitors Bureau, so he may need to jump in here if I get a few points wrong. But basically, uh, we received this letter from the Visitors Bureau who uh, remembers the trolley we used to run that connected up on weekends, uh, Jamestown, uh, Railtown, with downtown Sonora, and out to Columbia State Park. We used to run that on weekends. Unfortunately, we didn't have the kind of ridership that we needed to sustain that service, but they always felt that was a nice thing for our community to promote visitorship and uh, economic development and the like, as well as, you know, a good, provide a, an enhanced level of transit for our pay, uh, residents in our community. So, and when I look back on it, I think it was a good service, but I think that one of the things that we had missing was kind of the an element that we see in Yards and Dodge Ridge uh, where we get a lot of local support for marketing and cross-marketing of the service. It never really materialized. Uh, Dodge Ridge is a perfect example of where we ran that service for a few years. It didn't work out so great, but then it, we, it went away, and then when it came back, Dodge Ridge committing to help, committed to help marketing that, and it's been very successful as long as the snow's there, of course. Uh, so we, you know, we're, we think it's worth having a discussion with the Visitors Bureau about what we could do on Saturdays, uh, maybe make it a little bit more event specific, but I won't get too much into it. We, we're going to sit down with a group of people, talk about it, come up with a service. Then we'd come back in uh, February 
with uh, a concept of what the plan, what the service would look like and the cost of doing it. I know that they've already budgeted about $20,000 of their own budget for it. Uh, so that's a possible way of bringing some of those funds in. And, and Frank, you're looking at something from probably Memorial Day to Labor Day. On Saturdays, you're not talking a lot of money at that point. So that's kind of a nutshell. I think this makes a lot of sense to at least collaborate and talk about it. No decisions being made, though, today. You may recall that the object of bringing the trolleys in to the area here was precisely to, for tourism to connect Sonora with Columbia with Jamestown. That was the um, vision uh, for, for the trolleys originally, at least when I was with the chamber, that was my vision for it, and I think it, we went yeah, along with that. You and I are yeah. on the same page on that, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that's a great idea, and uh, thanks for the information on that. And So you'll be getting together with the Visitors Bureau to work out details and... Yes, and, and I think with those details, we'll talk about how we're going to do a better job of marketing it uh, to make it, to generate that ridership yeah. to be successful. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll move approval of item four on the consent calendar. Second. All right, sounds like Mr. Segarini and Mr. Gray, motion and second in that order. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Item five, uh, regular agenda, <clears throat> excuse me. Presentation of appreciation plaque to Maureen Frank for her assistant with the transit facility, assistance. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, as you might recall, we did our uh, grand opening of the uh, transit center uh, last about a month or so ago, uh, and it's been working as expected. We'll report more on that uh, later. Uh, but uh, this, the facilities uh, come out very nice, and Mo uh, Maureen Frank uh, was the project manager representing the county. She helped us through the construction and bid process, chaired all the construction meetings, uh, helped us through difficult things like stormwater management and fines and all those kinds of crazy things that happen in construction. Uh, and she's a veteran, you know, she just helped push us, push it through. And I think that's, you know, anytime you're in construction, you have those kind of challenges and, and she was, uh, was great for us. And we'd like to recognize her support of our project. It's a beautiful project that we're very proud of. And I think we've got an equally beautiful plaque to give her. All right. I think you ought to do it. All right, in appreciation of Maureen Frank for her efforts to lead multi agency collaboration as the county's project manager at the Law and Justice Center. Your professionalism and ability to coordinate with others is representative of the mission of Tuolumne County. This is being presented to you on behalf of the Tuolumne County Transit Agency. Thank you. Oh, it's beautiful. The other thing is gorgeous. Awesome. Thank you very much. Well, um, you know, just real quickly, because I know you guys got a lot on your agenda and you want to get done in record time. Um, thank you very much. It was a pleasure working with Darren and Tyler, as always. Um, it was nice that we had a project together to work on because we hadn't worked in a while together. It is absolutely beautiful out there. I know all of you have seen it. But your two staff members really put their heart and soul in really thinking about the writers and thinking about their experience um, at this facility and what they want to accomplish it and then what they did is then put it into the design of this and I think you have a center that um, all of us in this community can be very proud of it's something that um, um, fits into the campus it goes along with um, it's very hard to put a campus together and so um, really looking at it and and it's going to be as we finish it um, the other buildings aside it's really going to be a tremendous asset um, and I think it'll increase ridership. Um, so thank you very much. This is <laughs> unexpected. So thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Mo. Hey, Mo, thank you very much. Huh? Thank you. Thank you.
and off she went. <laughs> Item six, update on Tuolumne uh, Transit Center and new schedules. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna go ahead and let Tyler cover this item. He's been kind of a, the point person on the, both these items. All right, thank you. So as you know, on uh, November 1st, we started operation at the new transit center. Uh, our facility for allowing all the buses to meet at the same time and transfer uh, passengers as uh, part of one movement, and that has been very, very nice. Uh, it's been interesting to watch the site work and develop, and uh, your executive director and I have spent a lot of time uh, at the site itself and then, you know, kind of monitoring the site with the security system that we have in place. And it really is a, a uh, kind of a hive of activity and then it's quiet. There's a real ebb and flow of it as buses move in and passengers are on the site and buses move out and they go. And there are times where you have folks that are waiting and we have seen a really nice um, kind of percolation amongst the site where folks are they're in the shade structure, they're in the building, uh, they're just on the uh, courtyard area. And so I think folks are really finding a space out there that's uh, comfortable and, and appropriate. Uh, there's Wi-Fi, there's uh, water, there's restrooms. And uh, so we've been very pleased to be able to offer this to our uh, customers and the, the users of Tuolumne County Transit. I'd like to note also that, you know, we do have 24-hour monitoring there. And uh, there, you know, at least was some suggestion that we, you know, may have problems out there uh, with folks um, being on site after hours. And for the most part, uh, you know, we have noticed that other than, you know, some coming and going briefly, that the site really is, is being used by the transit community uh, exclusively, and we're not seeing, you know, folks camping out or otherwise being on the property beyond the service hours, which is, which is nice to see. Uh, we also see, you know, a regular element of the community that is out there kind of walking their dogs uh, and getting exercise. And so it's, uh, at least in the interim, until the campus develops, it is a little bit of a, a fitness uh, zone as well. Um, but we have been uh, reiterating that the site, although now it seems like it is an island un unto itself, uh, we will, uh, there will be a lot of infill happening soon. You know, our drivers are reiterate, reiterating that to the passengers and the folks who use the system, you know, that the jail construction will begin soon, the courtyard, or the courtyard, the uh, courthouse is coming, uh, and there'll be a lot of other activity there soon. Uh, as far as the new schedules, uh, it's always a mixed bag uh, when you change schedules, especially after you've had a schedule in place for a long time. And we've been hearing, uh, you know, all sorts of comments, as you can imagine, uh, for some folks, you know, the change in time and transfer schedule uh, is, you know, a bit of a hurdle and they've had a tough time making an adjustment or learning the new schedule. Uh, and for other folks, hey, finally they can use the system because now it works for them, whereas previously, uh, because of times and transfers, it didn't. And so, unfortunately, we don't have numbers to present uh, at this meeting. We'll have them for our next meeting. Uh, the contractor, I think, is working on the monthly report for November and spent a little extra time on this one because whenever you make a, a large shift like this, uh, you just want to make sure your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. So uh, we will have a full report on actual numbers, what we've seen as far as ridership uh, gains or losses uh, at our uh, next meeting. Anything else you'd like to touch on? Probably the only other thing worth noting, uh, well, maybe a couple, is uh, we did increase fares as well. That was approved by you previously. We've not heard any negative feedback on that uh, that, that we've heard through our drivers or anybody. Uh, and we do go out to the site from time to time and talk with people. Uh, as far as the schedules go, some of the feedback we've got is the large gaps that we've got in some parts of the schedule. But I would remind you that what we did in cutting services to again because we had to do it fare box uh, wasn't we weren't generating enough rev, uh, revenue from riders to justify the amount of hours we were serving people so we had to cut hours uh, and raise fares we have some large gaps but we focused on the routes during the certain times of the day that had the least amount of ridership so we should have had the least amount of impact to our customers in doing this uh, while at the same time maybe enhancing a couple connections in the prime AM, PM peak, as well as midday. 
So uh, that's all good news. And probably the only other thing I'd say we, we enjoy watching on our cameras. If you've been in my office, you'll see I have like 14 mm -hmm. cameras on a big screen in there. Uh, we love coming in and seeing what wildlife has meandered through during the night. It's always fun to look at owls coming and making a kill somewhere or a fox rambling through and whatnot. So that's kind of fun, too. So uh, service is good. Tyler, just a question. What are we doing? Uh, what is being done for those riders that are having difficulty understanding the new schedules? So our drivers really are, are fairly incredible with kind of you know, A, having to learn the schedules themselves, but understanding where their passengers are going and, and um, you know, what it's going to take to accomplish. And so they get real creative as far as, hey, we may not be able to make a formal transfer at this location, but looking at the schedule, if we, you know, we can drop you uh, at the supermarket and then Route 2 will come through and the timing will work for you if we do it that way versus sending you out to the transit center. Or So they're really good at, at finding some of the nuanced connections within the schedule that aren't readily apparent. And then, of course, the dispatchers as well, as folks call in and they're saying, oh, I used to be able to make this trip and now I can't are really working with them to say, well, maybe we can, and let's take another look at it. And by and large, more than anything, I think it's the, that the cheese has been moved slightly versus it's totally inaccessible. And so it's, you know, an 8.15 pickup versus, you know, an 8.30, and, and then making those kind of, um, kind of you know, changes in your life schedule to be able to accommodate the bus, which is um, one of the hurdles. Okay. Any other questions? I have one. Uh, any uh, feedback regarding the uh, route that was eliminated? So we, we did eliminate Route 6, and uh, we replaced that with kind of a general public dial ride. And uh, at this point, uh, we haven't had a bunch of service requests, although we have noticed some folks at the uh, charter school uh, the out there off of Creekside Road have uh, been um, making requests uh, to use this service. And we likely have some of the, we had probably five or six regular riders who were on Route 6 who were being accommodated as part of our uh, general public dial ride at this point. So it's, it's working as anticipated. We didn't expect a huge influx of, of new um, requests, but we are working through each one that we do receive to find a way to serve those folks. Pretty good. All right. Thank you very much. And item seven, approval of marketing plan for Tuolumne County Transit. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you might recall, uh, we had public input, I think it was from Carol, uh, suggesting that we uh, consider TV advertising uh, in our public outreach uh, and marketing and public transit services in Tuolumne County which we had done in the past uh, through Comcast Cable very successfully. We had uh, some of our best years at that point. At some point, we got uh, away from uh, TV advertising. And in that discussion, I think uh, Councilwoman Williams uh, said, you know, maybe we should, what's going on with our marketing plan is I think the gist of the input I got. And I said, you know, we haven't updated our marketing plan in a while. We're going to bring it back, uh, and we're going to look at TV advertising. And so here we are tonight. Uh, we have this marketing plan that uh, Tyler worked on. It, it identifies some of our uh, uh, services uh, that we promote and the various ways we promote it. I can ask, if you'd like, I can have Tyler get into that in greater depth. Uh, but uh, we... Uh, we want to focus on all of our different services, and we've been pretty successful in a number of areas, but this time around, we really want to focus on a fixed route. Uh, we've uh, had some communication with Larry Cope. He's been uh, asked by his board to uh, work with Mother Low Job Training and the, the college to uh, uh, address employee development uh, to help bolster our economy and help bring in businesses. So with that, we thought this might be a good opportunity to tie in our our uh, maybe a TV commercial to show how you can get from your house in a lot of pl t 
situations from your house out to the college, out to employment centers like SPI Industrial Park or over to Mother Load Job Training, and Transit can help it all come together for you. So that's our TV commercial that we're proposing. Uh, much of the rest of it is kind of stuff we've been doing over the years. We can talk about that in detail, but I know you, you are a little bit time conscious tonight. So uh, we'll forego that part unless you'd like to hear it. Uh, we do have Katie Dunn here uh, tonight. Uh, talk about uh, some of the Comcast services that she's offered to us. Uh, we are going to make a, a push on social media as well, uh, which is something that we had done, but we've kind of we had backed away from. We had interns working on that for us. But I think with between uh, Cole uh, providing some services to us, both on social media as well as helping with commercials, and then uh, Katie's program, I think we're going to be able to have a fairly robust social media uh, effort as well. And I'd be happy to, I'm hoping she'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Anybody questions, comments? Everybody good with it? I might want to hear from Katie just for a minute yes. if she wants to get up and talk about her services. Be good. Good afternoon. Well, I'm not sure when you guys were on TV before, but there has been a lot that has um, happened since the last time you were on air. Um, I not only represent Comcast, but also AT&T, UVerse, DirecTV, and DISH. I'm kind of a one-stop shop. And so what I had proposed to uh, Darren and Tyler was a TV Everywhere campaign. So not our, only are you on our Comcast households with what we, what we call linear television, which is your traditional television, but also a digital component being able to reach um, writers or consumers where they spend the most time, and that's in front of screens. Not just your television screen, but your laptop, your desktops, your mobile devices, and your, um, your smartphones. So not only is it television, uh, video television, but it's also video impressions. We sell it by impressions. And these are geo-targeted to Tuolumne County, um, and it's also audience-targeted to adults 18 plus and it, and really the networks um, that we selected were um, were chosen based on the creative so we are really looking for um, to build out a really robust campaign um, and it's to run March through June and to really hit it hard and then and then uh, pick up on that in uh, the next f fiscal year in doing more of a maintenance campaign with it. Yeah. Hmm. And they can use it on Facebook? Or? Oh, yeah. Yes. And I've worked with Cole in the past, so he's very familiar with our products and how to upload spots to our server. And you can use that 30-second spot on Facebook, any social media. And you, yeah. YouTube? Uh, sure. They can create their own YouTube channel. It's the next best thing to Google, sorry. Yeah. Learn a lot there. All right, any questions for Katie? I have a question. Sure. Um, can the only show on a mobile device, et cetera, if you're a Comcast customer? No, um, that's the thing is that we're subscriber agnostic, so you don't have to be an Xfinity customer. You can be. Uh, we have partnerships with uh, T-Mobile, with um, Verizon, with uh, DirecTV, Dish, uh, AT&T UVerse, um, and it's also um, we deliver those video impressions to connected televisions like Roku and smart TVs, Apple TVs, oh. all geo-targeted to uh, Tuolumne County. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> We've come a long oh, way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's no, a big good. step forward for us. That's what we need to be doing. Yeah. It's excellent. That's how you're going to get to people. So let's do it. Excellent. Let us know when it starts rolling out. Hopefully you'll know Hopefully, without yeah. us telling you. Yeah. Oh, darn, not another transit commercial. I don't want to hear about it. It should be on your phone tomorrow. Oh, that. <laughs> how about uh, would that be possible? Or you show the commercial? I, I think yeah. we did plan on doing that. 
Yeah. That'd be cool. February. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll get you back somehow. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank Good you. to hear. Good stuff to hear. Yeah. All right. Any public comment? And I need a motion to approve the marketing plan. Motion. I move that we approve the marketing plan. Second. <laughs> you get that? Beat you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Seeing none, marketing plan is approved. Uh, reports. Any reports under this? Uh, just briefly. Uh, I just want to mention that Tyler will be, on Friday, will be down uh, in Merced with the Mer at the Merced Council of Governments uh, reviewing transit development plan proposals for yards. Uh, as you might recall, uh, they're doing a short-range transit plan, and we asked them to look at a few things uh, unique to Tuolumne County. We, we do see... Uh, especially with the uh, increase in entrance fees at Yosemite National Park, potentially a lot more demand. We we're already starting to feel like we we're getting to the point where we might need a fourth service or fourth run, I should say, on the corridor. So we've asked them to look at a fourth run, particularly one, one that can connect up even all the way to the valley in some meaningful way. Uh, we did uh, pledge $20,000 uh, for our portion of the study for some of those extra items. Otherwise, they would just look strictly at what YARTS is doing today. So he's going to go down there and listen to uh, review proposals and hopefully find us a good consultant to study those things. And that will be Friday, and we'll re report back accordingly. Okay. Um, I just also related to YARTS. I want to mention Dick Whittington uh, has retired. We went to Dick's uh, retirement party, and they have announced a gentleman by the name of Artist Smith as the new transit director, uh, and we'll also be continue to be working with Cindy Kelly, uh, uh, who's kind of the coordinator for transit for Yarts, uh, and she's been great to work with. So uh, things are changing, but I think we can still look for a lot of continuity there. Good, and that's it for reports on transit. Okay. Mr. Baker, anything at this point? Okay, thank you. All right, with that, we will adjourn the Tuolumne County Transit Agency. Give us about a minute to switch gears, maybe less. All right, we will convene the Tuolumne County Transportation Council agenda. Uh, excuse me. Um, this will be that opportunity for oral communication to allow the public to speak on any item, not on the agenda, printed agenda. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on here. All right, seeing none, we'll move to the consent calendar. I think I saw that right. All right, item two, approval of the October 11, 2017 meeting minutes. Item three, adoption of the proposed schedule of the TAC, CAC, and TCTC, TCTA meetings uh, dated for calendar year 2018. Item four, review the steering committee for the State Route 49 from Jamestown to Columbia Complete Streets Corridor Plan Grant. Item five, approve sending a letter to local congressional representatives opposing a federal increase in truck size and weight. And item six, notice of a public workshop on December 14th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. for the Washington Street Improvements Project. That is your consent calendar. No, okay. Any public comment on any of these items? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, op any opposed? Seeing none, consent calendar is approved. Thank you. Item under seven, regular agenda. Public hearing to receive input on potential transit needs that may exist within Tuolumne County region and that may be reasonable to meet in fiscal year 1718. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, as you probably recall from years past, uh, the Transit Development Act requires the TCTC to conduct a public hearing each year to uh, receive input uh, on, on, on transit needs in our community that may be reasonable to be met. And generally, the uh, the threshold that we need to meet is we need to determine that we would generate enough ridership and fares to pay at least 10% of any additional cost related to serving 
uh, the request of any uh, person that uh, proposes a new service or expansion of existing services. So tonight, uh, we encourage you to take public comment. We did uh, post uh, notification uh, of this meeting in, uh, by, as required by law in the Union Democrat 30 days in advance. Uh, we also post on our websites, on our buses, at our transit facility. Uh, so people have had ample opportunity to learn about this meeting. And more than that, we've also provided free rides to anybody that wants to come to this meeting uh, on public transit. So uh, we've certainly done our best effort to engage the public. Uh, they can also submit comments uh, uh, on our, through our website uh, that will be considered as well. Uh, it, we will bring that back as part of the report that we bring back to you later, probably in, in typically in February or March. Uh, we do a report and we uh, identify which, all the comments that we've received to get listed and then which ones uh, are indeed a transit need and then which ones of those needs are uh, reasonable to be met and why we believe that we should perhaps budget for those services and then the, uh, some analysis as to why there might be other transit needs requested that aren't reasonable to be met. So that report usually comes out in February or March, uh, and then that process feeds into our annual budget uh, for public transit in the following year. So with that, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions about the process, but otherwise go ahead and open the public hearing. And I think one of your forms says they can also email or telephone. Yes. Okay, so I just want that to be yeah. broadcast uh, out there. Generally, the me this meeting is the conclusion of that process, but we also oftentimes extend it to the uh, close of business on Friday, just in case somebody catches it on, uh, learns about it at subsequent to the meeting. Okay. All right, so this will be the opportunity where we'll, we will open the public hearing to receive input on potential transit needs that may exist within Tuolumne County and may be reasonable to meet. Okay. My name is Beth Driscoll, and I'm 77. I came out of a nursing home uh, about a year ago, and I have a whole new set of problems that are called normal. Um, I used to be the one who drove people to the grocery store or wherever they needed to go. Now I'm a person who needs to restrict my driving quite a bit. Um, and I think there's a way to help people like me. Um, if you had someone on the phone at a, at a desk um, where I could call them ahead of time and make a request, say, I have a doctor's appointment, or I just want to go outdoors to a park. Um, I think there's a number of people that are in this position uh, who really should not be driving at certain times of the day and night and do because there's no other way. I live out in the country, of course, and there's no bus that serves me and dial a ride regular works out. It, the bus is too big to turn around where I am. So um, I'm not used to talking in public, so I would appreciate it if you would ask questions. So are you thinking of something like a van? No, I'm thinking of my own car and other people's own cars 
and what would happen um, because we all seem to be broke, we would have to qualify um, income qualification particularly and disability qualification. And then that would be put in, in with everything else. And we would eventually be told whether we qualified for the program or didn't qualify for the program. Okay, I have a question for Darren. Would something like the WHEELS program that they run in Groveland uh, down here work? Or could you use the voucher system for some, some, something like this, transportation like this? The wheels program could potentially work if it, we had something like that down here. I think the senior center may have a service uh, or perhaps other a Area 12 agency and aging might be able to help as well. Uh, they do, but they don't have enough people. Okay. Um, I don't think we have a voucher system at this point in time. That doesn't mean that we couldn't create one. Uh, we do have the TRIP program that says it that might work for this. I don't know if you're familiar with our TRIP program. It, it subsidizes your ride at 35 cents a mile for other people, friends, or family to give you a ride around. That would be perfect. Okay. Why don't, I don't want you to tell I me don't. your phone number and address right now. But okay. if you could maybe get with Tyler, Leave can it. you get that? And uh, we'll reach out to you and we'll, we'll see if we can't tailor some sort of service to her needs. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Just yes. a quick comment, and I appreciate you coming here today, and I'm sure uh, you're correct that there are a lot of other people as well that are in a similar situation, and, um, and I'm concerned for them and, and what kind of programs would be there for them as well. Darren, do you see, so like the wheels program, is that kind of like a co-op volunteer kind yeah. of a thing where you have like a ride sharing and... Um, it's volunteers that they use their personal vehicles or yes. do they use yeah. they do mm -hmm. yeah um, okay but we could you know if there was again with area 12 and aging or others we could help find grants to buy vans I was thinking uh, there's ways to subsidize that I think that there's ways to expand in those areas mm -hmm. that we need to kind of probe a little bit more Awesome. And we do have the trip program. It uh, started off pretty robust with a fair amount of people, but it's been kind of dying off. And I think um, that we have sounds really good to me. Yeah, we we allocated ten thousand dollars. We're not even close to spending all of that. And uh, we've tried to kind of keep that the information about that program close to the vest because we want people to ride public transit. Yeah. Um, but this is kind of a safety net service yeah uh but in reality i think it's cheaper for us to put somebody on a trip ride than a public transit ride and i think that we ought to re probably look at maybe just you know getting a public information campaign together on that yeah so that people uh like miss driscoll who maybe don't come tonight and get kind of that one-on-one -on -one service uh will know about it yeah. and, and and know how to reach out to us to get that type of service and know that it's out there for them Excellent. That I don't know great. that this is the perfect service for her, but we're going to work on it. Thank you, Darren. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. So I have a question, Darren. Uh, is the TRIP program, can it be utilized any day of the week? Uh, I hear yes behind me. I'm looking at Denise. She's my coordinator on the TRIP program. Is it every day of the week? Okay. Excellent. It does not go out of county, though, by policy. Uh, that's not what I think. But that's something we could talk about, too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for bringing that forward. Thank you for um, having the courage to come up and speak to us. It took a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but you did it. Yeah, good for you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments? 
unmet transit needs? Just making sure. All right. Well, in that case, we will close the public hearing. And thank you for those that spoke. Appreciate the uh, input and the need, hearing about the need. You know, Mr. Chairman, in years past, I've sat here in these public hearings and had this room almost full of people with comments. And today we've had one, an important one, but just one. So we must be doing something right, Darren. Oh, okay. You must be doing I'm something sure right. I'm sure you were going with that. Because <laughs> <laughs> last year we didn't have any comments, if I remember right. Yeah, it seems like we always got one or two. I can't remember exactly, yeah. but you may be right. It may have been. And we uh, opened it, and there were no comments. And you're right. When I first came here many, many years mm -hmm. ago, uh, the line went yeah. all the way to the back of the room and wrapped around a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but we've got a good service, uh, and we I think over the years, the the people that ride transit have learned that we really care. And we really try our very, very best to meet their needs, and we oftentimes expand services to meet those needs. And unfortunately, sometimes we have to constrict those services too. But I think the message is out there that as a rural county, we're serious about transit and meeting people's needs. And, uh, you know, I, I think that message is clear that the board, this board supports people with those transit needs to the maximum extent possible. Thank you for that comment. All right, I think we're on to item eight. Oh, we might have. Oops, wait a minute. I already closed it. Oh, you come on. We'll reopen it just for you. Thank you. <laughs> You're I'm welcome. Sorry, I'm I've been out of things for like four years. I didn't even know this was happening. But the one thing I had thought of um, for transit care is the. Um, diesel biodiesel buses um rvs that consume so much gas and when you use the um oil greasel you can convert a diesel to run on greasel or oil from the fast food restaurants which con which takes care of the problem of getting rid of that oil and also is non uh harmful to the environment so it would be better if they could run them on or convert the bus to run on greasel. That's just a thought. Okay, thank you. All right, item eight. Update on the development of Dragoon Gulch Trail System and Master Plan. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we were hoping that Rochelle from the city would be here to speak about it, but uh, she's not available tonight, so Tyler's gonna cover this item. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we did have a report from Rochelle at the TAC-CAC meeting, so I will do my best not to stray at all from what she shared. Um, so just a, just a quick update on where we've been uh, since the last time we kind of talked about this. We uh, created a master trail plan for Dragoon Gulch. Uh, we did that in... Uh, a partnership with the city and the public health department. Uh, from there, we were up to um, various grant programs, including the Active Transportation Program, which is a, a state program with federal dollars. Um, unsuccessfully, uh, we realized you know we'd have a much better chance of getting this project funded if we had an approved environmental document. So the Transportation Council funded the environmental document, and the city. Um, went ahead and certified uh, a mitigated negative deck for that. Um, new section of trail. As part of that effort, uh, the city realized that maybe there was a little too much trail, and so they went through a additional piece of planning um, that developed the map that you see on the wall now, which reduced the overall number of miles uh, by about uh, two miles. So it went from being a uh, plan that had, or a property that had 9.7 miles uh, at full build out to a project that had uh, roughly seven miles. Um, so I guess that's closer to three miles overall. Um, 
from there, uh, the city went to work um, trying to secure funding to uh, develop the plan uh, and, uh, and build new trail. They've uh, made a, a request to the Sonora Area Foundation and a local business donated $25,000. Uh, during this in time, you know, as we're uh, getting the clearances and everything, I, the Foothill Leadership Academy had been doing an annual fund run in the area. So they raised uh, over $12,000 to support additional trail building activity out there. That was awesome. And uh, then they got a final uh, stipend of about $1,500 from the Trail Me About It program, uh, which brought their grand total to roughly $40,000 to punch in some new trail. They had worked with, the city worked with the Forest Ser Service Trail Enterprise team to build the existing uh, trail that was out there, and so they signed a new contract with them to do that. Uh, as far as extending uh, the trail, I think they can uh, get about uh, 1.5, somewhere between 1.5 and, and 2 miles of additional trail uh, in with the 40,000 they have. And uh, I should also mention that they reached out, the city staff reached out to George Reed, who ended up uh, paving, repaving the South Creekside Trail, which uh, it really eroded substantially and it was a bit rough and you should see it now. It really is uh, pretty incredible and someone who's, uh, you know, has a, uh, a wheelchair or otherwise would like a kind of um, smoother overall ride now has the opportunity to kind of circulate from uh, the Alpine Lane area along the Creekside Trail to the Seventh-day Adventist property and makes for a really wonderful loop. So it's a very exciting project. Uh, the crews are out there working now. Um, it's being done kind of in a combination effort between the Sierra Conservation crews who are coming through and clearing uh, and brushing, and then the Forest Service Enterprise team, which is then coming through with a Suico, which is like a small trail building bulldozer that um, makes a trail that's just the right size, about four to five feet. Um, went up the other day and uh, checked in on the progress and they're really um, doing great work. It is not currently open to the public. Uh, likely late January, early February, that section of trail will reopen and it'll be um, a connection on the existing kind of lower trail system that's already in place. So. Just an update with what's happening at Dragoon Gulch. This has uh, been a project uh, that the Transportation Council has really supported. Uh, the city's done a phenomenal job of putting this all together. Um, just anecdotally, every time that I'm out there on a lunch ride or a walk, um, you know, people are uh, use it heavily and are quick to um, share their excitement for the additional trail that's coming. So thank you very much. If I may just add one comment, I did uh, I speak with Sherry Brennan uh, regularly, the District 1 uh, supervisor, and uh, I just wanted to share that for her, a high priority is to punch that trail up to the racetrack road area and then perhaps some sidewalk linking the neighborhoods along racetrack road to this trail system. That would also, uh, in addition to providing recreational opportunities for people, uh, provide a, a maybe a safer route to school at Sonora High School for some of the kids that live up there. So I just wanted to share that. It's uh, important to her, and I agree. That should be our, one of our higher priorities for in, within that overall project. Darren, under, under that uh, idea of safe route to schools, is that something that we could look towards Caltrans for a possible uh, look at? Uh, absolutely. We've, I think we put a grant in a few years ago, but it, I think we should consider doing it again whenever the opportunity presents. Darren, the uh, Creekside part of the trail, the paved part, um, as I recall, when they first put that in, that surface was supposed to last for quite a while. It has lasted for quite a while. How long do you anticipate the new one lasting for? I'm not much of a pavement guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure if Duke's here, he could probably do it. I, I always hear that if you properly maintain 
uh, asphalt uh, surface, you know, that's your crack seals and make sure the drainage is working and all those things. You should get 20 years life out of it, uh, you know, or 10 years and keeping a really nice surface is, I think, reasonably, to, very reasonable to expect. So I just want to say thank you to TCT for helping us with this system and all the partnerships that the city has um, that has supported the city, the Public Health Department, the Sonora Area Foundation, Foothill Leadership Academy, which has been a great partner every year for several years now, and that uh, race that they do each year has grown each year. Uh, George Reed for the work that he's done, the Forest Service, and the base here, the Conservation Center. So everybody partnered together to make it a, a, a much better in-town trail that everybody can enjoy with you live, work, or play. So thank you very much to everybody. Any public comment? No, no horses. Okay. All right, looks like item nine, approve resolution 576-17, adopting the 2018 Regional Transportation Improvement Program. <clears throat> Excuse me, I passed out a new uh, resolution 576-17 uh, on the dais, as well as an updated uh, RTIP uh, spreadsheet. And you'll see that there's significant changes on those from what you have in your pack, and I'll explain that uh, now. Uh, but let me first say that uh, Diane Bynum, as most of you know, uh, was the person that put my art tip together for many years, if not decades, uh, and we have sorely missed her in the last month uh, while trying to put this document together. Uh, while I gave oversight, I was not act in, in the nuts and bolts. Laura Shins, our, our accountant, she's working on the art tip right now because behind this, go when you submit it, you got a big packet that goes with it, a report. Um, and Laura's been awesome uh, with uh, accounting and budgeting and whatnot, but she didn't have any opportunity to go through our tips with Diane. So her and I both have struggled through this, and uh, numbers have been changing right up into uh, minutes before this meeting. So uh, for that reason, you'll see in the resolution we did ask for you to give authority on the, la on the second be it therefore for the executive director to make additional adjustments to the R tip. Uh, to protect funds and ensure pro timely project delivery. Uh, that is because, I uh, again, these numbers are changing right up to the minute, and then you submit the document to Caltrans. My deadline is Friday, and it goes to CTC, and over the next two-month period, they may find the technical corrections necessary and whatnot, and that's not uncommon. I will certainly report back on to you uh, at your next meeting for any significant changes from what you have here today. But let me just kind of, having said that and kind of led with my, you know, my uh, reason for the, uh, the late information, uh, really what we're looking at is making projects fully funded uh, that were once upon a time in the 2014 and STEP, or excuse me, RTEP, which included Peace Welk Interchange, Monoway Operational Improvement Project, which is the relinquishment project, and uh, the Stockton Street uh, bus stop project. Uh, in there, in the 2014, we had all those projects fully funded. Unfortunately, as you might recall, in 2016, the state had to cut $754 million out of their state transportation improvement program. And all three of these projects were either implemented on schedule. Uh, for instance, Peaceful Oak Interchange was impacted on schedule. When they were ready with the project, there was no funding for construction. Uh, while waiting for construction funds, they had two permits lapse, federal permits. 
uh, they have to go back. It's about a one-year process to secure those uh, permits. And in the meantime, costs have escalated significantly on construction, so you'll see those cost increases uh, on that project here before you today. Uh, similarly, uh, Peaceful Oak Interchange, uh, we were able to keep funding in for that project so it could proceed through design and environmental phases and maybe even right-of-way, uh, but they lost construction funding. And uh, they have had to push that project out because they have so much storm damage from last year uh, impacting their workload. Uh, they've pushed the project out to, I believe it's 2022 uh, on that project. That increases the cost of the project. And I might also add that in looking at that project, they did determine that they need more pavement than they originally budgeted for. The road needs to be wider than they originally budgeted for with shoulders and, and bike lanes, which causes uh, uh, cut banks and retaining walls. And, and what we end up with is about a 3.5 uh, $3 million dollar project. So we're covering those costs on the project. And Aaron, then finally, hold on just a minute. Go ahead, John. Uh, on that. Uh, on that project, one of the things that we've been holding off of doing for years is fixing the old Mona Way Road. And now we're looking at this up to 2022. I don't know if that road's going to last that long without <laughs> some repair and money. So uh, it you know, it's, puts I, us in a hole. They recently did uh, dig outs is what they call them, where they kind of trench along and they pave it. I agree with you though. That's a long ways out, and I, if you like, I can certainly. I spoke with them today about can we move it up a year or two, uh, but they're looking at their workload. I will. Uh, I don't know. If Duke's here today, uh, but if they can push it up a year or two, that'll save us co construction cost es escalation costs, uh, as well as address the concern you just brought out. I, I think we should do what we can do. I mean, if, if let's see if we can get Duke to respond to that. Yeah. Duke, I guess he could respond. And then I'll, I'll resume my presentation. After yeah, I, I have the same concerns. You, you know, he's talking, John's talking about Mona Way, and every time we keep pushing Peaceful Oak, the interchange that was originally designed with an interchange, they keep adding pavement, they keep adding cost, and I think back to what the original was, if we had gotten it back then, and I know if's mm -hmm. a big word, but every time we hear there's a delay and there's an increase in cost. Yep. Yeah. So that's another one that I would really like some help with. I'll, I'll be really happy when we're done with these legacy projects. Yep. Do. Okay. Well, I've made a note of the uh, construction date and we can see what we can do to expedite that. As far as the project itself, it's not that complex. As you know, most of it is surfacing. Um, there is a left turn pocket at the intersection with Janess that involves fair amount of widening and most of the widening is to simply comply with our standards for major collectors which is to provide sufficient width for bicycles and pedestrians. Um, the nature of the condition of that road when it was handed over to us was in poor condition. They beat it up pretty bad before they, uh, as part of construction, Unfortunately, the delays that we've seen, <clears throat> some of them are due because of the funding issues that were delays that pushed every our project as well as the Peaceful Oak ramps off. And, um, and the unforeseen aspect of the uh, storm damage. So uh, I'll see what we can do to push it up a year. Um, I know there was a desire originally to keep the Peaceful Oak ramps in this project from happening at the same time because it would affect that eastbound, westbound traffic. You know, where the idea was to keep one route, at least one route right. whole and undisturbed. So um, see what we can do. Um, the good news is that uh, this route does not require right away. Uh, that was the good thing. It does require a Caltrans encroachment permit, but does not require right away. And whenever you avoid right away, usually there's an easier way to move it along. So, see what I can do. Thank you. Thanks. 
Okay, there's just one other project I wanted to mention. Uh, that's the Washington St uh, Street Stockton Road corridor improvements. Uh, that project has a significant amount of uh, public transit uh, Prop 1B dollars uh, associated with it. Uh, it also had congestion mitigation air quality funds, otherwise known as CMAC dollars. We had to pull those some of those funds at one point uh, for other projects. Um, and in the 2016 STIP, we attempted to replenish funds uh, in the amount of $336,000. The state, uh, in trying to hold the line on their cuts at $754 million, did not allow us to program those dollars to that project. Uh, but now, this time, we have an opportunity to bring back those dollars and, f and get that project back to a fully funded, or at least closer to fully funded status. So we're proposing to do that. Um, other than that, uh, we do have uh, PPM dollars, project programming monitoring funds. Uh, we had $174,000 of new funds available to us. That pays, uh, that goes through your work program each year. and allows for staff to kind of do the programming of projects, monitoring and, and the like. Uh, after all that's said and done, uh, considering uh, that we had $5,347,000 uh, of new funding available uh, after covering all the cost increases and, and whatnot, uh, that leaves us with a fund balance or reserve of $1,550,000. You'll note in your uh, packet and uh, prior meetings and the RTP, uh, a five lane widening of 49 through the Jamestown area uh, remains a priority. Uh, we're working with Caltrans to do a congested corridor plan for that area, as well as our own complete streets plan. Uh, both of those will take a, about a year to complete. They'll help us identify the uh, scope of work for that uh, project and, you know, beginning, ending and whatnot. Uh, and then we will, once we get to that point, we'll probably want to start tapping into some of this $1.5 million to do what we call a PSR, a project study report of uh, that will identify more clearly what the costs are. We generally estimate it to be a 13 to 15 to 20 million dollar project roughly. Uh, that will allow us to really hone in on cost a little better and begin to perhaps in the 2020 RTIP program funding to move it forward through the environmental phase and, and, and whatnot, start moving that project forward. But before you can do that, you really need to clear out some of these old legacy projects that were kind of they're midstream at this point so uh, with that uh, my apologies again on the late information uh, uh, but we do I'd happy be happy to answer any questions but we do recommend approval of uh, resolution 576-17 and the uh, RTIP as presented any questions any public comment Uh, Tim Miller, City of Sonora, just um, support the changes that were made. Uh, the uh, Stockton-Washington Transit Project is an important project for the city and as well as the transit agency. Uh, we were, it was unfortunate that the state cutbacks, that program was taken out or the money was taken out. Um, we now have the opportunity to put it back in, as Darrell mentioned, and, and, it, and uh, we'd appreciate your consideration for that programming. Thank you. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 576 Mr. Chairman, I'll move approval of, re of resolution 576-17, adopting the 2018 Regional Transportation Improvement Program. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10, approve the letter to Caltrans with list of high priority shop projects for the Tuolumne County region. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, as a result of SB1, uh, there is a significant amount of new funding in the SHOP program for Caltrans. And I've given you a, a letter that looks like this. It's the director's message. Uh, and in that message, uh, after recognizing the benefits of SB1, it, it noted that uh, these fund 
these funds allow Caltrans to go beyond the kind of the basic kind of protectionist approach to their funding programs to be in a little more inclusive uh, with local agencies. We've certainly seen that. I've personally uh, experienced that with Caltrans in the last few months, if not the last few years, in their approach to being more welcoming to, to our input. And uh, so we see this as an opportunity to uh, look at our RTP, pull projects out of the Regional Transportation Plan, uh, and identify, uh, after looking at our accident record spot map and discussing uh, getting input from committee members and, and people like at CHP and others, uh, as well as a lot of public input we've had over the last year or two, uh, to really identify not only the projects, uh, but also the, the priorities. And I've kind of tried to group it in, in groups of priority ones, priority twos, and priority threes. We can certainly modify that or add or subtract projects uh, uh, based on your input tonight. But this is a great opportunity for us to give input to Caltrans. Uh, I think I've mentioned to you before that uh, in the last few months, we Duke and I have looked at the accident records man, uh, map and sent letters uh, of what our high priority safety locations are. Uh, we've gotten correspondence back. They are addressing our concerns, I would note, so I would expect nothing less in this uh, effort. Uh, they've actually asked for us this type of effort from us, and uh, the comment I got was, be aggressive in your request. So uh, here we are, and I'd be happy to take your input. the Sonora Complete Streets, 49 to Washington Street to South of Ponderosa? No, it, it would, well, it would be both. But the, the, the one way. for uh, Ponderosa is already um, priority one. No, it would be the last one on the list. SR 49, it will okay. be away. Okay. You know, those projects are shown as ADA projects, but given the accident history, uh, I think we should move them over to the safety project list, and we can show them as priority ones. And, we, and I will add, a, if, it, if it's okay with you, I'll add a sentence in here on my noting the recent fatalities there, or mm -hmm. multiple fatalities in recent years, particularly on Stockton Road. Thank you. Maybe you can save the life and from an earlier meeting, anything about State Route 49 and Stockton, that intersection with that left turn, that Personally, I don't make a left turn there. Um, I, I, meant, I meant to uh, uh, look at my accident records ma map, uh, but I got locked into our tip uh, right, all no. afternoon. So I will look at that, and, and I can add it if we have any, ac or any accident history there that's noteworthy, or would you like me to just add a period? Based on the accident history, we'll leave that up to you. you okay. How's that? All right. Yeah. State okay. route. So noted. Stockwell, well, it's 49 at 108. So. The left turn movement. Yes. Yeah. And the accident picture there. So, uh, going into my pet peeve here, uh, <laughs> old priest grade, you know, a person that has more near misses there than I care to calculate. <laughs> uh, that left turn pocket, uh, it was a conversation I had today with the, with some uh, residents of, of Groveland, of, uh, if if it's ever going to happen, and uh, um, you know, everything I see in here is 2020. I don't, I don't see anything that's going to happen anytime soon. And uh, uh, when we make that a 
a priority two that's telling me it's going to be 2024 <laughs> before it gets there, and I don't know how to uh, to move that move that particular one up. But. There's no real science between ones and twos, other than kind of what we've looked at in accident history and whatnot. Uh, so I have to get an erect to bring it up a little bit. <laughs> no. So can uh, we move it to a one? I, yes. It's on the page already. We just got to change the yes, numerical. Yes, we, 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 can, we can do that. That, that would make uh, my constituents feel a little bit better. And so ask a question. Uh, 2020 is, I mean, not that far away as quickly as the years go by. As we get older, it is a long ways away. <laughs> you just had John a birthday. That, you just had a birthday. Remember that? Yes, I know. Okay. Um, I mean, realistically, the pro going through the process of what has to be done in order to get a project to the to ready to break ground takes a little bit of, of time. And we're already at the end of yeah. 2017. So, so. I don't even know we should have that column there, frankly, at this point. These are just candidates. I could take that column out. I think staff kind of pulled that out of our RTP with some wishful thinking yeah. attached to it. Uh, but it's totally unrealistic. So uh, does that mean that John's request and other requests? I don't, I, I don't know. If, really move up? Um, <laughs> isn't it part of the highly unlikely anything's going to be done before 2020? Yeah. Anything isn't it part of the funding of SB one when it actually starts rolling? Yeah, and a lot of these are big enough projects that they need to be go into the next 2020 shop. So maybe that's a better, better way of looking at it. It needs to get programmed say, in 2020. Just put it on there, make John feel better. And <laughs> <laughs> let's let's quit talking about it. Well, then, then I want to add anything. Either take the column out or add 49 to the city store also as a earlier project before we have more people. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Any other input? Oh, I see Duke. He's getting ready to move to the mic. <clears throat> I uh, had mentioned this item when we did the TAC and the CAC, but I just wanted to uh, point out something that if you look on the page three, item number two, it talks about the new signal at the intersection of Mackey Ranch Road and Sierra Rock, which would be tied. To no. Chicken, to what is the ranch? what's the location? Uh, is that ranch. Chicken Ranch? Yeah, it's it's really the Mackey Ranch Road is the proposal okay, for a help. new driveway to go to the Chicken Ranch I'm Casino. With you now. Okay. Okay. I'm with you. So right there it talks about a new signal at the intersection with Mackey Ranch Road. And then in the first table, you'll see there's it talks about Chicken Ranch Road intersection improvements. So we're kind of covering our bases twice for the same thing. And uh, I was just would like a footnote there that the these two intersections are kind of same. tied. They're actually the same price shown here they're the 1.5 million but it's like okay if they decide not to do that then we're going back to this and it, it it's it, it's not necessarily tied together they both have to be done in other words they both provide for the need of getting people to that casino so it's there's a tendency that i think that they're going to be one or the other but Perhaps both. not both. Yeah, I, I think what our intent there is to recognize Chicken Ranch Road as a safety issue, and they, I think they have already at this point, and that Mackey Ranch Road is ultimately the solution. I know the tribe is working on uh, a design out there uh, for better access that will take the demand, some much of the demand off of Chicken Ranch and probably reduce the no accident rate out there. I think I probably need to add a paragraph to explain that so that they know where I'm trying to accomplish here. Yeah. I know we've had discussions with the district director on this specific issue, yeah. uh, but it helps to kind of reiterate that. So I'll add a paragraph. And then the other question I had was, I know these are preliminary, Darren, but the estimates here, we're not tied into these. These are very early, high profile uh, type of numbers. Yeah, they're, they're for planning purposes. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Expect 
the numbers to go up. <laughs> Tell me about yeah, it. As the years go on. <laughs> Any other comment? Well, I'll just reiterate for the record that safety on Stockton Road and Washington Street is very important to me. And even when I dress up in all kinds of bright reflective clothing, just the other day, one of those layman trucks, I had the right of way and it was at the Stockton Road, Washington Street, and he just cut right in front of me. I'm in my, you know, reflective jacket and everything. But I will say to Caltrans that I, I think you changed, they changed the five seconds to cross, because I can get almost like three quarters of the way across the street now before any cars move. So I've had a lot of comments from people walking down the street that the, I guess if you're turning from Stockton Road onto Washington Street, that that crosswalk has been greatly improved okay. with that length of time. So, but we have a lot of other crosswalks, but um, Tim didn't talk about, you know, they want to change the lights on Washington Street. So there's three samples up on Green Street down by City Hall. So at Green and Dodge is bright moonlight. By City Hall is that horrible high pressure sodium orange light that you can barely see. And then by the parking structure is the soft moonlight. So if anyone wants to drive down there, because I think the lighting on Washington Street, if we get rid of those high pressure sodium, we could all see, and that might be a safety factor too. But if you want to go check out those lights and Thank you. see which bright one you like. And, and report uh, just to Tim which one you like. Um, another thing that he mentioned yesterday was that the existing lights on, <coughs> excuse me, on Washington Street, that the older they get, the All right, item 10, we need an approval. Mr. Chairman, I move we uh, approve the letter to Caltrans list of the high priority shop projects with Palm County regions as discussed. Second. Motion second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 11, ooh, this was a hard read. <laughs> Sierra, Sierra Northern Railway Rail Improvement Project Grant Application Update. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, it seems like eons ago we submitted a <clears throat> grant application to the federal government uh, under the INFRA program working with Sierra Railroad. Sierra Railroad uh, largely drafted the, the grant application and I have most of it contained in there for you. We cut some of the attachments out. Uh, to save a little bit on copying cost. Um, it, it's over $30 million grant request uh, or project uh, with uh, a considerable portion of the funds coming from the Sierra Railroad. Uh, we have secured a cooperative agreement that you see attached here uh, <coughs> that will allow us to manage the project, get reimbursed for staff time to manage the project as well as hire uh, consultants to uh, take a uh, watch the work uh, in the past the way we've done is we hire a consulting firm that specializes in rail transportation uh, to basically oversee that the work is being done consistent with the grant application and Federal Railroad Administration standards we have to be very careful how we word that because the, the railroad is very protective the, of their relationship directly with uh, with the railroad administration meeting those standards and they don't want a third party telling them, but the third party will certainly advise me if I should be approving the invoices from the railroad and submitting them to the federal government. Uh, Carlin Drivdahl helped us with the cooperative agreement. I think most of you might remember uh, we discussed this, uh, must have been uh, October's meeting, and I was directed to go ahead and go forward with the, submitting the grant application. We've done so. Uh, got a lot of support around the community. It's a good project if we can get it done. I don't think we'll know uh, any sooner than maybe June or July uh, whether we got these funds or not. 
It's so. an impressive list of support letters. Yeah. That uh, most importantly, Riverbank, which you know sued the county over the uh, yeah, Rock right. Quarry project. Uh, but yeah, and uh, it turns out Oakdale and Riverbank were big supporters. Uh, not so much discussed in here is uh, passenger rail. There will be an opportunity for uh, perhaps some of the operations at Railtown uh, to expand uh, up in, in both east and west directions, which could be, who knows what that might provide down the road in terms of uh, visitor services and, and whatnot, and tying in with trolleys and different things. Uh, there's also funding in here for crossing improvements and uh, both surface as well as safety. Uh, that's not completely uh, figured out at this point in time, and we may need to apply for other funding through the PUC, uh, but uh, it, we do have some funding in there for that. But the project is primarily a railroad rehabilitation project. So uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Hope we get it. Yeah. yeah. Keep us posted if you hear something. Okay. Okay, it looks like reports, Darren. Yeah, um, just a couple items. Uh, first, I, I want to mention that the uh, California Transportation Commission did approve the Red Church allocation request so the city can begin into the design phase. Uh, uh, that will help them address some of the public comments that came up at uh, prior uh, meetings, and uh, so good news on that front. Uh, we did host a right of way, excess right of way uh, sales uh, public information uh, workshop uh, with Caltrans on December 4th at the Opera Hall. Uh, Caltrans had all their maps spread out. We also brought along some of our general plan maps. Uh, Duke and I assisted Caltrans folks, uh, and we, uh, we, we saw an awful lot of people in the, from the community that I think are kind of the movers and shakers in the community with money that tend to like to invest and build things. So we got the right audience. Uh, that will be followed up with a January 16th uh, right away auction at the uh, Opera Hall at 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, so that's, that's good news. And we took the opportunity to uh, take Linda Hennings out to two parcels that have had holds placed on them. Uh, they're uh, a long loop road on each side of the bypass, one across the street from uh, uh, McDonald's, and the other one on the other side of the freeway is a mar much larger, like four acre parcel. Uh, Caltr originally, there was an environmental hold placed on those. I was successful in getting the environmental hold lifted on those, but then very quickly, traffic ops put a hold on both of those. And so I'm trying to free it up from that. Uh, the parcel across the street from uh, McDonald's is going to be more challenging uh, from a traffic operation standpoint. It's kind of up on a hill. There's utilities going through it. There's drainage going through it. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to free that one up, but we've certainly trying a little bit. It's the other parcel around the backside uh, where guys, some, I've heard some realtors in town and, and maybe even Larry Cope mentioned be a great spot for like a Holiday Inn Express or something. Hmm. Uh, it's about the right size for a project like that. That one looks, I think will be successful. Linda seemed to be, be very supportive of uh, coordinating with uh, or working with traffic ops to free that up and see if we can't get that one to go to auction. So that's it for me on reports. I feel like there's something else that I need to report on, but I'm just not remembering it at the moment. If it comes back, let, let us know. Okay. Any questions for Darren? Mr. Baker, Carl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A um, few things to report. Um, the first thing I wanted to report was that uh, we have released the draft shop project list for the 2018 shop. That's our major maintenance program. Um, so, you know, your suggestions about what you want to see in the shop, you're, you're hoping to get onto this list. This list is a draft. Um, after review, then this list would go to the CTC for programming of the, of the money. So nothing here is a, a firm commitment at this point. It's just draft. Um, on the list for Tuolumne County uh, is guardrail, um, various locations, Sonora to Dardanelle, uh, Long Barn, 19 miles of pavement rehab, 
Elder Lane to Yosemite Gate, 24 miles of pavement rehab. Uh, Rockfall mitigation in Strawberry area. And um, slope stabilization out by Hard and Flat. Uh, I think that's multiple locations probably also. In total, that adds up to uh, 60 million. So uh, that's available for your agencies to review. Carl, just as a point of clarification, projects that were funded in prior shop programs like Yosemite Junction and yeah, uh, th that's all there. That's program. Yeah, so it won't show up on this list because it's already in the pipeline. This is just the new stuff that needs to be considered for funding. Okay. Um, the uh, I don't have them with me. The new mile marker is out. Uh, if you're interested, yeah. Google Caltrans mile marker and it'll come right up. Um, released yesterday, so I don't have paper copies. Uh, the, if you recall, the road charge program, that was the pilot program to look at the potential for, you know, paying for roads instead of through a gas tax, but by how much people use the roads. Um, the final uh, um, report is out. Uh, there's various, you know, a couple of different lengths of summaries. Um, that's available at uh, www.californiaroadchargepilot.com. So um, you can review where they're at with that. Um, we have released somewhere. There it is. Uh, SB1 is allocating money for various transportation purposes. Uh, the state wants to make sure people are aware of what's happening in their community under SB1, what's being funded. Uh, there's a map at rebuilding, rebuildingca.ca.gov. Uh, essentially, it's just an online GIS map showing, you know, these, this is the project list from Tuolumne County that this co county submitted for the use of their um, road maintenance money. and. Um, it shows our shop projects. It also shows where ATP projects uh, have been funded. Not all of our shop projects are on this map. At this point, the, the shop that's on this map are projects that were accelerated. In other words, the SB1 money is available. We've got projects that are ready to go. We accelerate those, get them into the SB1 money so that we can get them implemented quickly. Um, so that's out there for your your use and the public's use uh, update on the grants uh, the grants were awarded from the last cycle uh, Tuolumne didn't get any of the grants but we have a another cycle coming up um, the grant guide should be out in January and the deadline is February 23rd um, this uh, cycle will include the sustainable communities, so, uh, strategic partnerships, and the climate change adaptability. Uh, so that's probably the largest pot of money we've ever had in any one of our grant calls. Um, and that'll be a, an opportunity coming up. Then the last thing I wanted to um, remind is ATP cycle four is coming up. The call for projects is expected in March. Uh, there's 440 million available for that call. That includes federal, state, and SB1 funds. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer them. Carl, um, this has just been in the back of my mind for a while. <coughs> the uh, SB1 funds, part of those funds come from an increase in the gas tax. Correct. Yes. That is now in litigation, I believe. I believe it is going to the court system. If it's not there yet, it's supposedly going. Is there any discussion about what happens if the courts say that that was an illegal increase in tax and it does need to go to a vote of the people? What happens with that? Well, I don't oh. know. I, I haven't heard about a court case. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, I, <laughs> I have to read the paper too. Um, the 
there's also the contingency if if uh, this legislation is is uh, put or an initiative is put out uh, to revisit the idea. So um, I I'm not at that level in the department to really let you know what contingencies for that are. But uh, no, we we're kind of in a position of we have to deliver. Um, part of SB1 says Caltrans needs to increase their efficiencies and get these projects done and put them on the road. Um, so what are we supposed to do? I think we have to comply with the law as it, as it is at the <coughs> moment. Um, at the same time, obviously, management of the department has to, has to understand risk management and, and have that identified as, as something that they have on their radar. But I, I, I could ask some questions if you want some feedback on it. It's, I, it's just curious to me of what might happen if uh, those funds aren't available. I think ultimately we have to comply with the existing law and um, that's where the emphasis of our efforts is at for the moment. George, if I could kind of respond from our perspective, and we do have a link on our TCTC website of all the projects that are being funded now as a result of SB1. Uh, projects that are maintenance oriented that tend to be in annual budget cycles probably it, I don't know how the court case would affect it, but if it gets repealed at the ballot box, which is what we're all paying attention to, the funds will flow up to that point. So the maintenance side will, will the, what we got in the pipeline right now will continue until the tap is cut off, and then they'll, they'll go back to the old maintenance practices, which isn't very good. Uh, this list of projects here that we just adopted tonight will certainly be in jeopardy because that's looking out uh, to 2023, assuming that we're going to have those increases from the gas tax, uh, ATP funds uh, that we'll be applying for for many of the safety projects will largely dry up uh, and get much more difficult to deal with. Uh, it'll be profound, and you know I think that it's important for when we talk about SB1 and the gas taxes. It's 12 cents a gallon, which on the surface sounds like a heck of a lot of money, but I did some calculations today, and maybe my math is bad, but I said, you know, what if somebody drives 1,000 miles a month? It's 12,000 a year. That's a fairly average number. And then you say if they drive a car that gets 20 miles a gallon, how much more are they paying each month? And by my calculation, it's $6 a month. Um, that's not a lot of money in, mo in today's world, especially when you consider that our gas taxes have not been raised since the mid-'90s. So I'm hopeful that people will realize the real hit to their pocketbook is on just the gas tax side is not that substantial compared to what we're going to get for it. And uh, I think most pu of the public would agree that we're not in a good place before uh, those ga the new gas taxes came forward. And it's not certainly not where I want to finish my career at, uh, watching the system just deteriorate. Okay. Any other reports? First of all, I wanted to announce that uh, we're currently working on the Kuhn Mill Road project. Uh, in one respect, the weather is a blessing because we're out there doing work to replace a culvert, and as long as it's dry weather, that's a good thing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, certain businesses such as Dodge Ridge are impacted, so it's it's a two-sided sword there. But um, a couple other things that we have, uh, Darren already covered the uh, information about the excess lands. That was a very successful meeting. And I have here uh, some notes from our upcoming Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, there's several reports that are going to be coming forward to the Board on our various funds, both our Tribal Road Mitigation Fund, our Traffic Impact Mitigation Fund, and uh, the other county funds, and those are things that we use a lot for capital projects. We have the closeout on the Jackson Street Yankee Hill Road project, and we have ongoing professional services <coughs> for Algerine Wards Ferry, and uh, some environmental work uh, done for the Lime Kiln Road Bridge. Oh, that's the one at Curtis Creek. So a lot of projects moving through. Uh, 
the queue, as it were. And uh, anyhow, uh, one of the other things that I have a note here, because uh, I see the city's just gone, is that we we just received a request for invoice number two for the Greenlee Mono intersection. And Tim announced when we were at our meeting earlier that the, that project was more or less done and that the funding, uh, you know, the invoices are slowly coming in to us for that project. Um, uh, Caltrans, uh, uh, Kenny Weeks reported about a couple of other projects that are very noteworthy. Uh, Tuttletown Curve, everybody knows that real tight curve there on Tuttletown. They, he uh, showed us an exhibit showing what the project is and to make some improvements at that intersection. I know that there's a lot of towing services that may, may hurt their bottom line, but uh, the, that curve is, has been in need of improvements for a long time. He also talked about a very large uh, project that's an overlay that's going to go on on Highway uh, 108, 120. That's going to go all the way from uh, Lancaster Road, Oakdale, clear to Moccasin. That's 32 miles. That's a heck of a stretch of road. And and uh, those for those of those folks, uh, especially John, who uh, travel that way and see that uh, bridge over Lake Don Pedro, 49, 120. It is. They keep putting, they keep giving us a date and then they keep pushing it a week and a week. And when I tried to ask Kenny uh, that the latest date that we were given was the 15th, but then we noticed that they didn't work last night. So um, uh, they, they got one more lift to do on that thing and then they're going to take that traffic signal down. And that traffic signal has uh, pushed a lot of traffic onto county maintained roads, and I, for one, will be very glad when it's gone. I, you know, it, but it is turning out pretty nice. I went through there the other day, and uh, it's it's looking good. I I was surprised. So. Yeah. Uh, he also pointed out that the uh, one of the projects they're moving ahead with is tree mortality. So they're going to take one more shot at 120 and 108 to remove more dead trees. Uh, even though they've already done it once, they, they're still dying. So um, that's all I have. Thank you, Duke. And then, you know, Darren, did you, uh, you come back? Yep. No? Still has still flying around somewhere? At this point. Okay. All right. With that, wish everybody a Merry Christmas. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Okay.